Today we're going to look at how you can create beautiful mobile menus for your bubble app. You can see I'm using some conditional formatting to help the formatting on desktop. What I really like when we go to mobile is this little hamburger icon here that takes up the space rather than all the text. We have a bit of an animation to reveal the focus group and some more conditional formatting to highlight the text when it's hovered on mobile. Before we get into building the mobile menu, a quick favour. If you could like this video, it would really help me out in building the channel. If we go into the bubble editor, what you can see at the moment is I have a group here with some pieces of text along with a button. The problem is, if we assume that this will work on mobile, well, we're just going to see that that won't be the case. If we close the screen here, what we see is that after a while, the text just gets jumbled and it's really not great from a user experience. So we're going to use some conditional formatting and some hiding rules to make this a bit more appealing. First of all, we need to figure out when exactly things start to go a bit wrong. We can then put the hamburger icon in at that specific width uh, to avoid any unfortunate user experiences. It's looking okay at 992. 768 is getting a bit tight, so I think that I will probably start putting in the visibility rules around the 760 mark, just as a nice kind of clean point. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back into our group and we are going to do a bit of formatting here. We are going to say conditional when current page width is less than 760 pixels. We're going to hide this element and we're going to do the same thing for the other elements in this group here. Simply copying and pasting the conditional formatting should suffice. And I actually forgot to change uh, this last part here. So you need to put this, the element is visible and leave that unticked. So we'll just go back to the first one, remove that and do the same for the other elements in our group up here. This means that when the page goes to 760 pixels or less, as will be the case on our mobile devices, we will no longer see these elements. So hopefully now when we reduce the page size this time around, those elements will no longer be visible. We can then go about putting in our hamburger icon. So again, that's looking fine. And yeah, you can see there at this width, the elements get hidden. We're gonna go back to the bubble editor and now we're gonna add in that hamburger icon. So if you go to your visual elements and you go to icon, you can put that in here. We're going to put it in the same group as our other text elements, and we're going to make it the last element in that group. Just quickly do a bit of formatting to make this look a bit better. I found that 40 by 40 tends to work well for the hamburger icon and make it a fixed width and a fixed height. We're going to vertically align that, and we actually have to change the icon to make it uh, the hamburger icon that we want. So we just scroll down here through the icons. It should come up in a second. And there it is, you can see. Finally, we want to change the color on this just a bit. Uh, we're going to make that more in line with the rest of our uh, font colors. Okay, so now that we have that, we want to hide this for all which greater than 760 pixels. So we don't want both the icon and these other elements to be on screen at the same time. So if the other ones are being hidden at 760 or less, this one is going to be hidden at uh, 760 or more. So we just do that. And we're going to change that as well and we are going to leave that unticked okay so let's see how this looks now hopefully we should not see the hamburger icon show up on screen straight away only when we reduce the screen size should it really appear so nothing 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 and then you can see just as that goes away the hamburger icon appears which is great a couple of things on the formatting side it looks a bit big so i'm going to reduce the size and i also put in a bit of a margin just so it's not hugging the right hand side of the page so let's just do that quickly and we can move on to the next step change the height and width to illustrate 35 by 35 and we'll put a bit of a margin on the right hand side maybe 15. the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to use a focus group so these aren't used too often in bubble apps i've noticed but they really are useful and you can find it under containers here and we're just going to put that anywhere on the page these are not visible by default uh, they really are designed purely for menus in this case we're going to use a column uh, as a container layout uh, we are going to make it not a fixed width because we do want to expand a bit under mobile sizes. Smaller screens generally 320, so I think it's safe with a minimum width of 320 and a max width as infinity. And then in height, bit of uh, adjustment here. This is going to be much less variable. So let's put it at 400, and that's much too big. So let's actually just go back to let's say 250 and see how we get on with that. You see we have one issue here, and it's remember to fill out the reference element. Now, a reference element is the element that the group focus is placed in relation to. So, for example, if I was to choose uh, this text here, text we make scheduling, um, 
and then you will see that it's going to be placed in relation to that we make scheduling great yeah okay so now because i've set this piece of text as a reference element the group focus uh, is going to beneath that we can slightly adjust and uh, the offset so for example if we wanted it to go down a bit lower below that text we could put in 100 here and it'll go down a bit if we want to make it to the left similarly you could put in 100 there in our case we're going to set this focus group in relation to the group menu as a whole up here you can see that's group menu so we're going to go back to our focus group we're going to click reference element and we're going to say group menu now you can see it's much closer to the menu we're going to get rid of these offsets for a minute just to see how it looks and now we have a kind of rough idea of where our focus group is going to be the next thing we need to do is figure out the trigger to actually reveal this focus group as I mentioned these are not set by default so what we're going to do is we're going to click on our hamburger icon there we're going to click start and edit workflow and we're going to say that when uh, the icon is clicked we are going to show an element so we are going to show and we're going to show focus group A so we're going to see how this looks on our preview mode at the moment hopefully when we click on the hamburger icon we're going to be shown that focus group uh, pretty much immediately so on the mobile view click on the icon and sure enough it appears straight away there's a couple of things i'm not thrilled about at the moment first of all there's this gap on the right hand side with no uh, kind of symmetrical gap on the left so we're going to use offset to fix that and secondly i don't like the way it just kind of appears straight away so let's see if we can work on that as well to make it a bit smoother in terms of transition we can do that by using animations so we're back in our workflow section here what you can see is that the first thing shows the focus group and we want to animate it so if we go down to element actions and animate we're going to do transition uh, slide down in I think so first of all we need to choose the element that we're going to animate we're going to use focus group a and we're going to look at transition and we're going to go transition slide down in we're going to find a custom duration of let's say 600 and we'll see how that works and we're also going to start changing the design here uh, so we're going to remove that style we're going to give it a plain white background one two three four five six for white and we're going to use that offset to make it a bit more symmetrical we're going to put in 15 there so let's see how our menu is looking at the moment we want to see the full effects of the animation until we start putting text elements in it but let's just give it a test out nonetheless so we're on to mobile view click on the hamburger icon and we do see a menu appear i didn't notice too much different there with the animation but like i said i think you need the text to really kind of see the full um extent of it so let's start off with that let's put in a group into our focus group let's call this group benefits mobile because we're going to be repeating these pieces of text in these groups in terms of layout we're not going to make it fixed we're going to make it a row we are going to container align to the left and we are going to get rid of the fixed width there as well min height uh, probably about 40 and i'm going to let the height fit to the content the one thing i do want to do is i want to put a bit of a border on the bottom of it uh, just to define the different menu sections so let's go to define each border independently let's go to bottom solid and let's make it a really light gray just so it's not uh, too in your face okay we're going to put the text in this group here now and uh, we're going to type in benefits we're going to do some quick formatting just to make this uh, more aligned with the rest of the theme of the app i'm using dm sans as a font for quite a bit of it a nice safe one that you can't really go too far wrong with so let's go look for that now and let's change some other things along here as well let's change the font to 18. Uh, i'd actually like to have it a bit bolder so actually let's go for dm sans with the 700 waiting on it uh, actually no, let's just see how it goes so far and we can come back to it in a minute if we want change the color there to that and we are going to give this a margin on the left hand side as well of 15. we're going to vertically align it and that should make it a bit better okay now let's see how this looks when we click on the hamburger icon hopefully we're going to see a nice animation mode in effect so again here on mobile and yeah you can see that really kind of nice smoothly comes down and it's going to look even better when we put the other text elements into it so let's do that now let's just copy this down two three oh we don't need to do that two three four and then five and we're just going to change the name of the groups here i haven't really been doing that well so far in terms of naming all the groups so let's just try and uh, finish off strong uh, we're going to change the text here to how it works 
I'm going to change the next one. Oh, that's not uh, formatted where we want it. Get rid of that fixed width there. We should probably do the same for all the others. Change the name of this group to group testimonials. And similarly, we are going to change this text to testimonials. This one we're going to change to, and I keep forgetting to, to change that to fixed width there. So let's just do that very quickly for these two. I really should have done one correctly and moved on to the other ones, but these are the way these things go. Change out the pricing. And we see we actually have an extra space at the bottom of our menu here. So we're going to change uh, the height of that down to, let's try 240. And we can actually put a min height down to 200, and it's just going to fit to it automatically. Perfect. Uh, get started for free. And we're going to change the font on this just to make it a big difference because again it's kind of a call to action throughout the app so let's make that stand out relative to the others okay i think that's looking pretty well at the moment let's just do a quick preview one more time one or two more things to do but nearly there in terms of building uh, our mobile menu so down into mobile mode and sure enough it's symmetrical we have this group here and yeah liking that at the moment so just two things left to do i think before we're fairly happy with our mobile menu the first thing is i noticed there that the uh, elements on desktop view seem to be quite far to the left and i think that's because i'm not collapsing the height of the hamburger icon when it's hidden and then the second thing we want to do is just add a bit of conditional formatting for the hover uh, on the text here so if i click on the hamburger icon first and deal with that first issue what you are seeing is if we go to appearance and we go to layout yeah i should have done collapse when hidden you'll see now in a second when i fresh the screen the button was uh, just here but when we collapse that hamburger icon it's a bit further out and it just looks a bit better uh, i'm actually going to increase the mean height of these groups as well maybe up to 45 just to make it a bit bigger in fact even 50. oh that's actually already uh, been taken so what i'm sorry 70. yeah that is a bit of a difference uh, 50 is probably a nice happy medium so let's do that for all of them again these small things don't make too much of a difference on their own they do add up uh, overall when you're building an app and then the last thing we're going to do is just that conditional formatting uh, when you hover the text now the thing is you're not really going to be hovering text on mobile this is really only if people for some reason make the screen small on desktop like i've been doing so far so what we're going to do is click on the text and we're going to say conditional and we're going to say when this text is hovered we're going to do font color and we're going to give it this lighter blue here we're also going to give it a bit of a transition um, so that it's not just an immediate hover what i mean by that is usually when you hover over an element under some sort of conditional formatting it just changes instantaneously so you can see on off on off it can be one kind of smoother effect much like we have with the menu so the way you do that is you go back into your editor you go to uh, this section here at the bottom of the appearance tab and we're going to go to font color and i like ease and ease out at 200 milliseconds then we can just copy the formatting onto the rest of the elements in here we're not going to do that for the last one but for the other four i think it's good to have them similar i just want to make sure yeah we still need to do the transitions unfortunately uh, so we ease and ease out one more time for this one font color ease and ease out and similarly again font color ease in out and i'm not quite sure why that didn't copy i guess if you copy conditions sorry if you copy formatting it doesn't obviously copy conditions uh, which i should have known so let's just do that really quickly and then i think we're pretty much finished with our mobile menu uh, so let's try this one more time onto here onto mobile menu and sure enough we have our conditional formatting so that's how you go about creating a real nice mobile menu on your bubble app if you would like more bubble tips and tricks please do subscribe to the channel